In this clip, I'm going to go over some sample transactions with you that have revenues and expenses. Okay, what we have here at the top are some T accounts already set up for us, and we have some accounts with existing balances. So cash is starting off with a beginning balance of 50. In this clip, I'm going to go over some sample transactions with you that have revenues and expenses. Okay, what we have here at the top are some T accounts already set up for us, and we have some accounts with existing balances. So cash is starting off with a beginning balance of 50,000. Loan payable has an existing balance of 20,000, and there's a beginning balance of $30,000 in capital. So let's look at our first transaction. Okay, on January 1st, we purchased $100 of supplies, and we paid cash. Now remember, if you pay cash, that means your money has to go down. So let's credit cash. Okay, now we have purchased supplies. So that means we have to add those to our supplies account, and they have to go up. Okay, January 10th, we earned $1,000 in fees. The customer paid cash. Now remember, do cash first. It's always the easiest. If the customer paid cash, that means our cash must go up by $1,000. Okay, now we've earned $1,000 in fees. This is one of the new accounts that we've created, fees earned. Now we have to record that fees have gone up. And to go up in the capital is always a credit. Okay, pay the hydro bill $75. So again, do the cash first. If we pay the hydro bill, our cash has to go down. Now we have to record the hydro expense. We no longer record it in capital, but instead we record it in hydro expense. Next one, the owner withdrew $500 for personal use. Okay, again, do cash first. If the owner takes out $500, that mes means our cash must go down by $500. But now we have to record this in this new account that we have called drawings. Now, if we take out $500, that's going to go against our capital. So it would be a debit it to drawings. Okay, January 25th, we earned $600 in fees from XYZ Incorporated. XYZ will play pay later. Okay, so no cash has changed hands here, so we can't, it doesn't affect cash. So we earned $600 in fees. So again, fees earned. The recorded increase would be a credit. Okay, now they're going to pay us later. So here we have accounts receivable XYZ. Now our accounts receivable is going to go up because they're going to pay us later. So we record that as a debit. Okay, January 26th, paid the rent of $900. Okay, again, if we pay something, our cash has to go down, so let's do that first. Okay, now we have to record that we paid the rent, which is an expense, something we paid for. So we have to record that as a debit to rent expense. Okay, and the last one here, January 28th, made a payment of $5,000 on an existing loan. So we're making a payment, so that must mean that our cash again is going to go down by $5,000. Now we have an existing loan, and here it is, loan payable of $20,000. We've made a $5,000 payment on that, so we must debit loan payable to make that go down. Okay. Now we've recorded all the transactions. Your next step would be to balance each account and do up your income statement and your balance sheet.